Finishing moves in fighting games exist for you to end your opponent with a dramatic flourish, a display of over-the-top force that will leave them in no doubt whatsoever that they messed with the wrong person. Exactly. They'll think twice next time. Some fighters, however, didn't get the memo and have come bearing finishing moves that, although apparently effective, are also totally ridiculous and that they should be embarrassed for using. Don't take our word for it, check out these seven embarrassing finishing moves that fighting game characters should be ashamed of. Enjoy! <laughs> 1996's WWF In Your House for the PS1 was wrestling's attempt to cash in on the popularity of Mortal Kombat. As a result, it was a much more fast-paced, action-packed wrestling game with digitized sprites of the wrestlers and a bunch of bizarre locations for the matches, including The Undertaker's Acid Crypt, I guess, and of course, Bret Hart's Basement. But of course, as everyone knows, the most important part of any Mortal Kombat game is the fatalities, and WWF In Your House made sure that they had an equivalent. These super pins were spectacular match-ending finishing moves that drew on the wrestler's own gimmicks for inspiration. So for example, Owen Hart, recently crowned King of the Ring when the game came out, magically dropped a throne on his opponent while a cape and crown appeared out of nowhere to billow majestically in the breeze. Likewise, the Ultimate Warrior, who was big and strong, electrocuted his opponent until they exploded into charred wrestler chunks. Okay. So these super pins are weird and bad, fine, but none of them are what you'd call actively embarrassing. Apart that is from the one belonging to Vader, the large angry man in the leather mask who in real life was best known for a move called the Vader Bomb, in which he used the ropes to land on his opponents with a big splash. Here we go! In this game, Vader's big finisher involves him launching himself high into the sky and then returning to Earth where two things happen. One, he lands on his opponent, and two, we discover that his buttocks have grown to about ten times their previous size for some reason, so his opponent dies. In all honesty, given the choice, I'd probably take the lightning. Now learn why I'm called the Spirit of Vengeance. Hey, whoever called me cute just now, step forward so I can kill you. Who will come out on top? Ready! If you're in any doubt as to how unpopular Ghost Rider is as a Marvel character, they let Nicolas Cage play him in a movie. Which is wild because Ghost Rider is objectively cool. He's a biker with an on-fire skull for a face who hits people with a chain and is called Ghost Rider. Vengeance. I don't know what more you people want. To be fair, Ghost Rider doesn't help himself, as we can see from his appearance in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, where he is a fine, if unremarkable, fighter, using his flaming chain to hit people and occasionally remembering that he has a motorbike. Less impressive, however, is his hyper combo known as Penance Stare, which was suggested by viewer Stephen Shipway on Twitter, in which Ghost Rider looks at his opponent. Sorry, weird intonation there, I thought there'd be more text looks at his opponent. Awkward. In the comics, this penance stare is supposed to make Ghost Rider's foe feel every bit of pain they've ever inflicted on others all at once, but the game doesn't tell you that, plus it does the same amount of damage to everyone, so you wouldn't be able to guess either. Anyway, once his opponent has got a face full of Ghost Rider's mean mug, they will go on fire and fall over, so I guess that's something. Maybe this is based on something Nicolas Cage can do? Would make sense. Just come quietly, Catwoman. Maybe I'll make you chase me? We both know how that'll turn out. Begin. In DC Comics, the Flash's superpower isn't being super fast, but rather that, in the minds of comic book writers, being super fast basically allows you to do anything. For example, the Flash is able to vibrate so quickly that he can phase through matter and run so fast that he can go back in time somehow, because physics. In Injustice 1, the Flash's super move was called Speed Zone and actually made sense because the Flash ran really fast at his opponent and then punched them really fast. In Injustice 2, however, the Flash has a new super move called Time Changer, in which he messes with the fabric of space-time for literally no reason. 
Grabbing his opponent, the Flash then runs at super speed which takes him back in time to ancient Egypt, where he slams his opponent against the Sphinx, breaking its nose off, then further back to dinosaur times where he slams them against the T-Rex, and then back to the present where he slams them into themselves. <laughs> You know what hurts as bad as being slammed into the Sphinx or a T-Rex? Being slammed into almost literally anything, The Flash. Was it really necessary to dick around with causality and endanger everything that has ever happened or will happen just to do 35% damage to the Joker? I guess I have to give him points for imagination though. Batman just runs people over with his car. Stay down. This could mean a new dawn for mankind or a new nightfall. Sharon, would you care to take a stroll? I've a great many questions that need answers. Guilty Gear Exerd, I think I'm saying that right, gives its characters excellent cinematic special moves called instant kills, which do exactly what they say they do and range from people turning their opponents into pool balls. Out of turns, I'm afraid. This seems pointless. Like a machina! This oh. To Arthouse Cinema. Ah, you already made the mistake. The mistake that will cost you. Boring. Destroy! Much, much less cool and terrifying, however, is the instant kill belonging to Slayer, who is a stylish vampire who looks like he spends a fortune on beard oil. A man cannot survive on odd dance alone. I require something more. Slayer, Slayer win. win. Straight. Straight. Slayer's instant kill, known as All Dead, starts strong with Slayer punching his opponent so hard they get launched into space, before making a hard pivot into bad poetry as Slayer recites a procedurally generated haiku. A light to the I rise with the sun. I prostrate myself in prayer, dragging the bad one. Oh, what is these are all uniformly nonsensical and terrible and are then reviewed by your defeated opponent, some of whom are actually quite into them. I am pregnant. The great power of life. The revolution. Like a Destroy! I don't know, it just seems like a vampire should maybe have a finishing move in which they drink your blood or... Okay, we're sticking with the poetry. I see. In this august year, holding back their angry tears, an erotic Most uncooperative. Sin is in trouble. Countdown. Rage. Rock. Roll. Fight. Roll. Roll. Rumble. 1999's Wu-Tang Taste the Pain, released as Wu-Tang Shaolin style in North America, is a fighting game featuring hip-hop pioneers the Wu-Tang Clan, in which it appears that their music is more of a side hustle compared to their true passion, violently dismembering people with kung fu. Don't mess with big baby Jesus! Because it's a fighting game from the 90s, the game featured both way more clowns than you'd expect and plenty of gory fatalities, with the various members of the Wu-Tang Clan demonstrating a much bloodthirstier side than you might be anticipating if you'd only ever heard Gravel Pit. These range from the practical, like Method Man hammering people's heads off with his big hammer, Two more supernatural moves, like the Jizza firing psychic knives out of his head. You'd think he'd mention being able to do that in one of his songs. Considerably less badass and kung fu inspired, however, is the fatality in which your character places their opponent, somehow, on top of a giant fairground strength tester. They're not tied up or anything, they're just up there, chilling out while you hit the machine unsuccessfully a couple of times before finally sending the plunger right up into their crotch, messily exploding them into tiny polygonal chunks. Which is nonsensical and bizarre, but still, I guess it does prove that Wu-Tang Clan really ain't nothing to f*** with. If 
fewer ranking Smash Bros characters in terms of how well they do against each other in an actual fight, Donkey Kong would surely come fairly high on the list. Probably just under all the anime boys with swords. That's because he's a massive ape who could easily pull, let's say, Luigi's arms from his sockets and then batter him with the wet ends. Which is why it is perplexing, to say the least, that for his final Smash finishing move in Super Smash Bros. 4, Donkey Kong hasn't gone with what I'd have picked, Ape Rampage, but rather has chosen to focus on his conga playing skills. This final Smash, known as Conga Beat, sees DK pull out a pair of bongos and start playing them. As the player in charge of Donkey Kong, for you, the game now becomes a rhythm action game as you attempt to press buttons in time with the beat to increase the attack's damage. The enemy will then be hit with shockwaves and you will be hit with waves of embarrassment about how you should be smashing, let's say Luigi, into a fine mist with your powerful ape hands. Yes, very good, you can play the bongos. I bet he gets an acoustic guitar out at parties as well. Cyrax wins. The point of a fatality in a Mortal Kombat game is to kill your opponent. Sub Zero wins. Right, exactly, thank you, Sub Zero. Someone obviously needs to explain this to the yellow cyborg Cyrax, because while this fatality of his from Mortal Kombat 3 does involve killing his opponent, it also involves killing Cyrax at the same time. The fatality in question is Cyrax's self-destruct, in which Cyrax, victorious and with his opponent at his total mercy, blows himself up. Fatality. Yes, the opponent dies too, but Cyrax is definitely also dead. He doesn't, like, reform or anything. They're both done. So I guess it's a draw? I don't know what you're laughing about, Cyrax. This was a terrible idea. Cyrax wins. Those were seven nonsensical fighting game finishing moves that you should for sure feel embarrassed for using. Now is the time to tell us that one of these is your favourite moves and actually very strong and you have zero shame about it, good for you, or if we've missed an even more embarrassing finisher you want to share. We'd love to hear either in the comments below. And if you like videos like this, why not consider joining the OX Supporters Club on Patreon? The link is over there on the right. Thanks for watching.